Happy Halloween, everybody. This is SNR's super special Halloween showcase. What you're about to see was an event like no other. Sure, there was a couple of other events on last night, but I could only afford to go to one. So everyone else at the other events, they must have had a ball. Like, and who went on Halloween? So, I leave you with a happy Halloween message and enjoy the SNR Special Halloween Super Showcase and scare you later. Are we live? <laughs> no, we're not live, but we're here at the Bendigo Hotel, part of the uh, Halloween Special with none other than DJ Black Kitty. She, she forgot the years and we bring the fear. And uh, meet my next door neighbor. It's all cool with those shades, so um, yeah. The next uh, thing popping up will be uh, Coffin Carousel. They're gonna play, so I'll get some footage and uh, do a little interview. So uh, until then, scare you later. Here is Coffin Carousel, fresh from playing the Bendigo Hotel. So, Carousel, how do you feel after that opening spot? It felt good. Yeah? yeah. Uh, it's good release, man. It's good to rock. I think I need a massage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, I want a massage. And I hope you get a massage. Hey, massage be cool. Um, pretty tight. Yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, it sounded good. It's good, man. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, it felt like it would actually go. It went a lot better than I thought it would. Yeah. Oh, shit, I'm so tongue tied. <laughs> God damn. You always rehearse to be awesome, but when you get there on the night and all the pressure's on you, like, shit, awesome's pretty hard, so. I think we got close. I was pretty stoked. Nah, no, pretty good. And everyone seemed to enjoy it, so that's amazing. So, being Halloween this weekend, do any of you still go out trick or treating? Uh, I will be with my two kids, um, my three and one year old, so I'll definitely be trick or treating. What I'm going to be going as, I don't know. Um, I don't know who thought that far. No? <laughs> I confessed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited there, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah just put the light bulb in the um, So, yeah, I'll be participating. Now, you've released your EP of Fiend, and how did you go about getting that video clip done? Because it features some really interesting concepts, and driving around in that Dodge Charger, how did you go about getting that? car itself yeah <coughs> it's a mate of a mate and he said well the director Rick was like we need a fucking rad car for this clip because it's going to be driving around you don't just have a Holden like yeah, nothing is Holden I like Holden <laughs> he was like but mate guys we can get this car it's like the only one in Australia like, that's black <coughs> and Johnny Knoxville actually signed that fucking car so as soon as I heard Johnny Knoxville sign that car I was like it's in the clip so yeah. and um so when organising like your other video clips for your songs, like, do you plan everything out or do you just make it completely random? There, there is, yeah, just some ideas and there is a, well, there, there is a bit of an idea around them, yes, but we, it's generally a base story and when it gets to the actual filming, it's kind of like, oh, just do this, really. Yeah. A lot of it, it's just free reign creativity, it's just do whatever the hell you want. We, we, we may get an idea in the moment and we, we just roll with it, like, if we, we go in, okay, we're going to shoot in the car, but, like, there were some ideas in that night, just came out, the guy's like, yeah, I want to try this, so we're like, cool, I'll shoot it, and ended up using it, so. it's, good, it's good to stay creative and stay on, stay on track to your goal, I guess. So, with the year drawing to a close, is there any other plans for another tour, or any big name bands you want to have a support spot with? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slip up tomorrow night, we'll buy a beer, right? But, uh, <laughs> no, I'll fight them. <laughs> I, I guess there isn't any media plans, we're just gonna sort of lay, take a few weeks off, chill. We actually fi filmed and video recorded tonight, so we're gonna edit that together and probably put it out later in the year for a Christmas present. For those who have been, was it naughty and nice? <laughs> So, what does Coffin Carousel like better? Do you like being nice, or do you like being a bit naughty? Man, that make me call my HR department. <laughs> Where's my fucking manager? You're not my supervisor. Just make sure my wife's not listening. <laughs> no, nah, definitely nice. Definitely nice. <laughs> Always naughty. Always naughty. What's where's the fun of being nice? me. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> but we're nice sometimes. And have you got any fond memories of Halloween? Could be from when you were young or just last year, but any Halloween memories that you just love to share? Not, well, I grew up in two and a half acres, <coughs> so I didn't do a lot of trick or treating as a kid. So, because <laughs> there was no neighbours. <laughs> um, two houses down, you've already done ten years. Exactly, so. Yeah, but now obviously with the kids getting involved, yeah, it's good fun. Good fun. You can't take yourself too seriously. Pretty much every Halloween the last three, five, six, seven, eight years, been in the band doing a gig, so dress up as yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's, it's, it's always been awesome. It's it's like we probably, you know, 364 days of the year we call Halloween as well. But <laughs> this is like the official oh, Halloween. Yeah. It's, everyone wants to celebrate, so. Yeah, you know, how can you not enjoy Halloween? Exactly. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is Coffin Carousel. Check him out on Facebook and all other usual internet things. And yeah. this is what you need to look for. Uh, CDs. Merchandise. CDs, iTunes, SoundCloud, <laughs> Spotify, YouTube, all that jazz. It's on there. Lime wire. 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 Lime So this is the second part of the SNR Halloween Super Special, and I'm here with Demon Matrix. Hello. Hey. Hi. Hi. So, Demon Matrix, how do you feel about tonight's gig? We're pretty well uh, oiled up right now. Going for the loop. Yeah. It was great. Nice. We played with uh, two really cool bands, uh, Caffin, uh, Caffin Carousel, <laughs> Coffin <laughs> Carousel, and uh, Caffin. Death, <laughs> yeah. Caffin Carousel. Uh, and we're very happy to uh, be here in Melbourne, and we want to come back again very soon. I'd like to perfectly shout out to Death Bart's insane vocal chops, incredibly talented. And the first gig down in Victoria, first gig in Melbourne, it was just a fantastic night. Good times. Where are you guys from? Because you obviously travelled somewhere to Melbourne, so where is your home? We're from Sydney. Sydney. <laughs> Can't you tell by our pale skin? <laughs> oh, I just thought that was elaborate makeup. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that too. Uh, That's what we used to make stuff. Uh, wait till you see us drive, then you'll know where we're really from. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, Sydney's at home. This is our. I've had one here in uh, Gold Coast, one here in Gold Coast and South Coast in uh, Victoria, and now we've got our first one in Sydney coming up in a couple of days, 2nd of November at Frankie's in Sydney. Very excited for that one. Now, um, being Halloween, do any of you feel trick or treat to this day? <laughs> we do things or treats. Well, I'm a fucking treat all the time, so... <laughs> we do, we do, we, we like candy, um, we like tricks and we like treats, there'll be a few later on, there'll be some, <laughs> yeah, although we, we, we don't tend to go around knocking on doors anymore, that's, that's a bit of a mask, we come around and knock on doors, the ADOs, yeah, 
you know, I don't want to be messy with that. Uh, and um, do you have any fond memories of Halloween? Like anything crazy, anything boring, or anything more sexy happening? Well, it's kind of Halloween for us all year round, so this is just an added bonus. We, we look like this all the time, so... Now everyone else just sort of fits in with us. Yeah. yeah. Really. Clearly everyone's just trying to be like us. Finally everyone's <laughs> caught up. We're just happy that Mel let us come down and play at her show. We're pretty excited about this, <laughs> and uh, we want to come back more, and more and more and more. We want to come back to Melbourne as much as we can. More so, more yeah, this is what we love doing, so, uh, yeah. Do it again for the whole concept that you guys do, like, was there anything you were in the to go so extreme or just keep it nice and casual and just have that look and then make the music bring that message for you? It's not, it's not really that thought out, we just, this is how we look, we just play music we like and, and uh, look damn good we hope it. people like it as much as we do. Yep, no, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, I almost went. You done? Yeah. <laughs> Bye! Let's go and twist it. Now. How do you like Melbourne compared to Sydney as far as all the crowd? Mate, you're opening, oh, up, no. a, mate, you're opening up a kettle of fish. Mate, it's mate. much better. Are we talking football teams? Because up the Sydney Swans. <laughs> Get no, the fuck no out. we're not. We're not. We're talking everything that matters. Oh, fuck uh, <laughs> it, Melbourne for us is it's the coolest place because it's got, actually got a soul. It's got a thriving music scene. It's got uh, a community that gets behind music, live music, uh, and people support it, and as a result, the arts community grows and becomes something really cool, and that's currently severely lacking in Sydney for a variety of reasons, which I'm not going to go into right now. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did not say that. 2 a.m. lockout? We do, we do, we, we actually do like Sydney because we get to surf in Sydney and uh, appreciate the sun and... Uh, the warmth, and we're all beat. As you can see, we're all right into the beach. And, uh, <laughs> we, we get out a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Al yeah. particularly likes working on his tan. And you know what? He's a natural one. We do like you because you look like a giant orange, and we love citrus. <laughs> we're all into our citrus. We do like oranges. Vitamin C is where it's at. We, we haven't we haven't quite got into smashed avocado yet, but we're getting there. And we That's like um, and we like um. Uh, mandarins. Mandarins are great. We're into mandarin. You look like a big mandarin and we could all take a bite out of you. <laughs> well, for Halloween you have to dress up for the occasion and, well, did you walk from where you're staying to, to the venue? As this, or did you sort of go in a bit with the sky? No, we had so we, uh, we used one of the bathrooms here. And something I've noticed about Melbourne I'm bathrooms, true. you all cover your mirrors with stickers. You realise it makes it difficult to see, right? So, that's why we found ourselves all in the girls' bathrooms. And, uh, and there was makeup. Well, you guys just look drop dead gorgeous and oh, you rock stop, really stop, good. Stop it. it was a fantastic set. Hope you enjoyed your stay in Melbourne. Sorry, Melbourne changes its weather like I changed my mind. How hard is it to get into those overalls? That's what I want to know. Well, no, how does it go to the bar? It's not hard because it's really cold. How do you how do you take a dump in that gear though? That's what we're going I'm swimming. <laughs> is, there, is there a little flap at the back? And if you get excited by young boys from Sydney and old boys, what happens? No, no, I get you excited by, <laughs> by ladies. Oh, yeah, you're right, we are a bit excited. And that was Demonatrix. You're our favourite pumpkin. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That was Team The Matrix, and last is Death of Art. We are here with Aaron from Death of Art, who just closed 
the Halloween gig at Bendigo Hotel. Now, Erin, how do you feel about tonight's performance? Oh, it was great. I had a great time. It was awesome. Yeah, quite happy with it tonight. Now, is art really dead, or did you just give it a new makeover? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I guess there's a, an, an argument for that either way. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean... Certainly, we're looking at the darker side of art, so I, I guess that's the explanation of our name. Now, throughout the performance, you were changing into different costumes. Now, when yes. did the idea for that come to mind to do on stage? Um, really, it was something I wanted to do right from the start. My background's theatrical, so it was just... That was right there from the beginning, I wanted to... Have fun, make it a show. I mean, I go see a lot of bands, and um, you know, you want to make it something more than just oh, you can just sit at home and listen to the songs. Like to me, there should be a more visual element um, on stage. Like, because you really showcase that you are a natural performer, and like, Thank you. was there any time? that you feel nervous about going out or have second thoughts about what to wear or is it a set? Oh no, what I'm wearing has all been organised and um, uh, I like all my props and things like that and changes. It's been rehearsed and rehearsed many times. And um, do you still trick or treat during Halloween? No, I haven't done that for many, many years. <laughs> but I do like to celebrate Halloween, that's for sure. And what does it mean to you, the holiday which is usually frowned upon but generally gets many people to have fun? Well, it's just embracing, you know, um, the, the darker side of things and, and the culture as well. Like, I'm a big part of the, I guess, the gothic uh, network and community here in Melbourne and um, it's great, it's like it's our day, it's our weekend. And how long have you been involved with music and performance? A really long time, since I was, I started learning dance when I was three <laughs> and then did singing and acting and yeah, was doing stuff as a teenager so it's a long time. And your voice, like, that is one of the most powerful voices I personally have heard. How did you manage to keep your voice in such good shape and not, like, end up passing out after <laughs> such a long note? <laughs> I haven't heard that before, that's awesome. <laughs> um, well, like I said, I've been doing this for a long time. Um, I have had an amazing vocal coach who I had weekly sessions with for 10 years. Uh, so, you know, I've trained, I've worked on it. And um, was singing always the first idea or did you figure of playing an instrument beforehand? Uh, no, singing came before first. I then learned a little bit of keyboard. I wouldn't really call myself a keyboard player though. Um, but with all of the other side of things, like I do all the production, so I've learnt things along the way there as well. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I, I probably started singing as a, as a teenager, really. I didn't really know I could sing until then. <laughs> well, it generally is very impressive, like seeing you perform as people have seen with the clips that will start and follow. Um, do you have any advice for upcoming singers? Just work on your craft, you know, um, and just get out there and be involved as well. Uh, I actually work as a vocal coach, that's what I do for a living, so, uh, you know, I, I do with this all the time and it's just like, yeah, you know, do, be, be diligent, like, do practice, uh, you know, get yourself a coach you feel inspired by, that, you know, helps a lot, but, you know, be, be involved, go out and do things, uh, but don't think it's all just about getting a band together and, you know, that's, you want to rush into that, you've got to work on your craft first. And final question, what is your most cherished memory of Halloween? 
Anything fun? Anything a bit crazy? Think about that. Um, no, I remember as a young teenager, probably about 13 or something, going trick or treating with one of my friends and you know, saying all those silly things to some of the people that you know wouldn't give you a, a treat. <laughs> like, um, what is it? Um, oh, something about I don't care. I'll, I'll trick or treat, smell my feet. Give me something good to eat. If you don't, I don't care. I'll put down your underwear. <laughs> and well, we didn't cool, actually pull down anyone's underwear, no. by the way. <laughs> All right. Well, it was an honour to speak with you, and hope you had fun this year. And well, the acoustic gig next week, yes. the fifth of November. Yes, that's right. Yes. Well, all the best for that. Thank you. You're nice welcome. You. Thank you. Beautiful. Well, folks, that's that for another Halloween. Scare you later.